Okay, this is more by way of an update, really, and to show you some of the things that I've been up to, because um, not updating videos a lot makes you think that somebody isn't doing anything, and I'm working quite constantly at this in the time that I have available, and um, quite a lot of it takes quite a lot of time, so I thought I'd do an update for you. So, here's a little bit of the graphene oxide paper that I made. Uh, I left the graphene to dry in a pan, and it uh, made this thin paper. Uh, now I'm pretty much at an impasse with that until I come around with some way of getting that to um, disperse properly in uh, a solvent. And I'm trying various solvents, so I'm trying ethylene glycol, I'm trying toluene, I'm trying uh, benzohexane, ethanol and water. Uh, I'm also trying different methods to try to reduce that to graphene. I've tried um, aluminium powder, which does a reasonable job, uh, sodium hydroxide, a concentrated sodium hydroxide solution, and I've tried um, heating it. Now the paper is actually pretty strong in extension and pretty weak in shear. And, and there you go, if you bend it, it breaks quite easily. Now that makes sense because the, the platelets of the graphene are laying on top of each other. If you try to pull them apart, you're not going to be able to. If you bend them, they're just going to snap apart. So it's pretty strong if you pull it, but pretty weak if you snap it. So I've left that to one side for the moment. Now along with all the other things that I've been doing while looking at this, um, I've sort of come up with this method of uh, making graphene into collated compounds. And it started because a friend of mine said, have a look at this website. Uh, and I had a look at it, and this guy had a, a black powder, and somehow he heated it, and the whole thing went wild. And um, I thought, well, that looks like a graphene intercalated compound to me. Now, graphene intercalated, intercalated compounds are the stuff that they use in um, lithium-ion batteries in computers. Uh, and um, they're... Uh, not too difficult to make. That's graphene and manacles, incidentally. So what you need is um, some sulfuric acid and some phosphoric acid. So what's in this jar is 30 millimetres of concentrated sulfuric acid, and uh, that's 98%, incidentally, and 10 millilitres of concentrated phosphoric, which is um, 75%. And into that jar, you add uh, quite a lot, actually, a couple of grams of graphite. So you don't need to worry about it at this stage, you just chuck the graphite in there. And I'm sure you've seen me do this before. Now it's fuming because the glass is wet, because I washed the glass, and as the um, acid hits the water, it's got a hydrolysis reaction, so it's fuming a little bit. It's only water there but coming off, as the acid is actually hitting that water. So you just swirl it around a bit. The next thing you need is one gram of potassium permanganate. Now, the way these um, reactions work is that the um, oxidising agent attacks the edges the, of the graphite. So the graphite's laying like that, and the oxidising agents get into the edge and lift the edges a little bit. And then the intercalating agents can squeeze in between the graphite and they're drawn into the graphite, and they make it puff up. And all the intercalating agents lay in between the layers of the graphite. Uh, and that's basically how they're formed. So, in order to make a graphite intercalation compound, you need some um, graphite, obviously. You need some way of lifting those edges, in which case it's potassium permanganate. I have tried other oxidizers. I tried um, sodium nitrate, for instance. I didn't think it was particularly good. Um, and it seems that the phosphoric acid uh, really helps with the process. It's kind of like a catalyst, I suppose, but it really helps. Now, the sulfuric acid itself is um, an intercalation agent, so it gets drawn in. So once you add this, the intercalation reaction will start. So we just add a little bit of it. And there isn't that much potassium permanganate, so that reaction is not going to be particularly aggressive. And you can see it's starting to fume already. So that reaction is starting. Now, to that, what you do is add some ferric chloride, and there you go. Now, I tried this with four grams of ferric chloride in a previous experiment, and it worked really well. What I want to do is try six grams. Now, this will fizz like mad and fume like mad when you add that ferric chloride. So even though I'm in a well-ventilated room, I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to take that outside and do it outside. So I'll get back to you as soon as I've done that. Okay, so that's it. After the iron 3 chloride, the ferric chloride has been added. It's on this black colour, deeper, deeper black. Now, when you add that chloride, it is a very aggressive reaction. It'll fume like mad. Initially, the fumes will be yellow-green. That's chlorine coming off. 
and then they'll go a white color, which is the heat of the reaction and um, the hydrolysis reaction driving off water vapor. Right? So you want to add the thing and leave it sitting outside until that reaction has calmed down a little bit. It's not quite calm yet, it's still giving off quite a lot of water vapor, but this jar is going to cover that pressure. Plus I'm going to take it back outside and loosen the lid a little bit. Now you leave that sitting around for two hours. That's all it takes. You don't do anything to it, just leave it sitting around for two hours. I'm going to go put this outside. So after two hours, um, you kill the reaction by adding a lot of water to it. Uh, a couple of litres to that 40 millilitres, and then keep adding water um, until the pH is neutral. Now, when you add the water and stir it up, it'll stay in suspension, but it drops out very quickly. After about half an hour, you can pour off most of the water, add another litre, stir it, pour it off. Uh, after I did that three times, the pH was neutral. Uh, and this is what I got. So I just left that to dry in uh, a ramekin on the top of a radiator and I got this material here. Now this is intercalated graphite and it's intercalated with ferric chloride. I think that's a bit scary for you, um, being chlorine gas and all. There is another method, this one I came across. Now um, graphite will intercalate with uh, metal halides, so aluminium chloride, um, iron chloride, quite easily, quite readily. Uh, you need to make the reaction conditions a bit tough for it. And um, one of them, apparently, that's really, really good, and I decided to make it as well, was uh, an aluminium chloride intercalated graphite compound. And the way I did it was I went down to uh, the plumbing centre and I bought one of these. It's a pipe nipple. And I also bought two of these, which are pipe end caps. So what I did was uh, I wound this stuff around the pipe nipple. This is um, Teflon tape. It's the yellow Teflon tape, which is meant for gas. The white Teflon tape, it comes with the white cartridge, is meant for water. This is slightly thicker, it's meant for gas. And you just put a wrap of Teflon around it, and then, oops, and then pop in, pop on rather, one of the end caps, tighten it down tight. Wrap the other one. When you've done that, what you want to put in here is uh, four grams of graphite and 12 grams of aluminium chloride and half a gram of ferric chloride. Now it seems that the ferric chloride acts as a catalyst for intercalating the aluminium chloride into the graphite. So you pop those three chemicals in there, screw on that cap, tighten the whole thing down and then put that in the oven at 230 degrees for eight hours and it'll just cook. Now, after eight hours, oh, sorry about that. After eight hours, what you get out is this stuff. And this is aluminium intercalated graphite. So we've made iron, uh, ferric chloride intercal intercalated graphite and aluminium chloride intercalated graphite. Now, the interesting thing about these intercalation compounds is that their um, conductivity is hugely superior to graphite. Graphite will conduct round about uh, 190-200 K per centimetre, something like that. Um, these compounds uh, will conduct, or rather their resistance, is reduced by like something like 100,000. It's, it's really quite amazing, actually. Um, the problem with them is they won't do that when they're in solution. If you put them into solution and um, try to get them to conduct, they don't do it very well. Uh, you have to put them in solution, paint them on, and then compress them. Once you compress them, you get the conduction back. So they work really, really well if they're compressed. But there is one other interesting thing about them, which I'm going to show you now. If I take a little bit of this stuff, so there's a, there's a tiny piece. What's that, about a centimetre by half a centimetre by half a centimetre? So I'll just take a little bit of that stuff. OK, I'm not sure how well you're going to see this. But there it is, there's a bit of that stuff in there, I don't know, lid, and I heat it. Can you see the expansion on that? Look at that baby go. Here it is, after I heated it, and that 
half a centimetre by half a centimetre by one centimetre bit of intercalated graphite has expanded to fill this tub. So that is one hell of an expansion rate. So what you've got in there are exfoliated graphite flakes. And um, they're again pretty conductive, but, but not like that. What you have to do is um, compress them back down again. So if I take a piece of it and just drop it on there, And what I get is that really strange metallic looking foil. And that is a graphene intercalated foil. And that will conduct at about an ohm a centimeter, something like that. Okay? That basically is what they use in um, LiPo batteries. They use um, lithium, though, as the intercalation compound, and I've used iron chloride. But that's what you're making there. That will form a um, very strong conductive plate. So possibly for a capacitor, I'm thinking here. I obviously did it on a piece of shiny paper so that I could lift the foil off. Uh, I guess if you did it on a piece of sticky tape, then you would get that foil attached to a bit of cellophane. And that's got to be useful. So I also did that with the aluminium chloride one that you saw me make um, earlier. And with the aluminium chloride though, instead of just rubbing it down, which I did with the iron chloride there, I took it out to the vise, I put a pipe on the vise and really got some pressure behind it. And the um, conductivity of that was absolutely truly astounding. It was 0.001 ohm per centimetre. That was just amazing. Um, so what I'm thinking here is that if you could get that onto a, a, a track and then get the track into a very... Um, strong press, then you're going to get some conductive tracts on there, or again, um, you could use it to be making some super caps, maybe, or your own batteries, or something like that. But I, I really quite liked the graphene intercalated compounds, which is why I thought I'd share them with you, um, while I get round to doing something with the actual graphene itself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.